Hey guys, this is Mikro here, back with another video. This one's going to be on an updated uh, BB guide. There are a lot of different BB builds that are kind of being played around with right now. I'll go over like which ones are standard and then I'll hop into it. But if you guys haven't noticed, I am putting out polls every day of like what video I want to make and I'm trying to incorporate like some of the feedback in, into these for like the next day's poll. So make sure to check those out too to figure out what like video or I'll figure out what video I want to make from that. But yeah, so this one's going to be about IGBB mostly. Uh, there are like the only other BB build that's really played is VGBB, but IGBB is generally better. Uh, the main reason why it's better is because Ice Gauntlet tends to be a better weapon than any other weapon in Fort. And the reason for that is just because of Ice Shower, and it just controls space super, super well in terms of getting into the Fort. So the in terms of like meta builds, I made like a little checklist that I'll go over in a second, but there's like a, a light is being played with BB now, medium is being played, and heavy is being played. Uh, he heavy and light are the most common ones, I would say, and the medium is still played, but it is being played less. And they're it's kind of a preference thing when it com comes to the medium and light, but the the shift in BBs has been to go even lighter on the con than normal, and then just use that extra damage to be able to one-shot combo healers with just a shot shrapnel shot, and that will itself one-shot, and the nades will also one-shot clumps, and you still have good survivability because you have BB. But in terms of, like, what is meta and, like, what is like being played by most people with BB. Uh, light with 150 con, 200 strength, 150 is popular. I uh, kind of went over this in other videos in the past, but the, the reason why 200 strength is really good is because you get this extra 10% damage conditional if they are in like a slow, a stun, or a root. And this applies to Ice Storm now, which makes it very good, like with Unending Thaw. Uh, and yeah, there are some people who break this convention of 150 con, and they'll go even lower on the con, and they'll push the the strength up even higher, uh, which doesn't give you like extra perks, but it just increases your damage overall. But strength does scale better with BB than in, so that's kind of noteworthy as well. And usually when you're looking at these builds, you're looking for some sort of flame attunement, uh, keenly empowered BB. Ideally with Enchanted as a third, but those BBs can be very expensive and are hard to roll. But if you do hit that, you will like have a big uh, increase in damage. It's like one of the, the few weapons in the game that's able to get like a 10% increase in damage from having a 3 perk. And it's one of the few weapons in the game where it's like probably worth playing an extra penny to have the 3 perk. But it's like very hard to, and very rare to, to see them and roll. Uh, the main advantage of Light is you have like good mobility. You're still a little squishy, but you're not as squishy of some other classes, like if you're on a fire staff with 50 con, you would do let you would do about the same damage, maybe a little bit more damage, but you'd basically get one shot by any build in the game. Versus a BB will get like four to five shot even with 50 con, if you stack the right perks. And generally with BB, uh, in heavy it's a, a little bit different. Uh, but people stack Brazil freedom to an extent, and then a lot of shirking for it. And light, given the upcoming PvP changes, I'd probably say invest in elemental version before you do tricking for it. The other reason why I say elemental version is the physical version. It depends on your server, uh, but there are people who are running bow on the top servers in NA right now who are slotting 150 int and then for the extra 50 int for the extra damage, 150 for the extra elemental, and then slotting ins inside of their bow like a elemental gem just to get around the thrust protection that healers normally run and that other classes normally run. So at that point, they're mostly scaling off of Elemental, and same thing with Musket, and then that also protects against BB, so I'd say Elemental is a little bit better than Physical, but Physical is also really good. I would probably prefer that o over going Shirking Fort, given that there's going to be nerfs coming in Light specifically. And then the other thing would be you probably want to run an Opal on your BB, or a Tier 2 Fire, uh, if you have Opal, I'd put Ruin Gloss in. I think Tier 2 Fire is a little bit more damage overall, so I'd probably lean towards that for that specific build because it's a more of a one-shot oriented build versus a, a build that prioritizes getting alt faster. But if you do go the, the Ruin Gloss, you won't be missing out on too much damage and you'll be getting extra ult charge, so there's an argument for either one. 
But I'd say if you want the little bit of extra burst to be able to one-shot people more consistently, tier 2 fire would probably be the way to go. And then you want to put fire boosting gems in all your slots and look for the invigorated punishment uh, flame damage ring. Or you can go for a mortal empower, which is going to be nerfed according to depth soon. So I would be careful investing in that. But if you get a two perk, it's probably fine. And a flame and a fire damage. The other thing is uh, the burning is is really underrated as a third perk. I don't know if I have it on this character, but I have it on like a, on my East character where I have like burning as a third perk. The main reason why burning is good is we have like a, a burning dot gem. And this kind of applies to heavy. It also applies to other classes, but it will increase your the amount of dots that it, your auto will hit by one, which will counteract what Desert Sunrise does. And the way that dots work as you need like three ticks from a dot in order to get like one tick and alt charge if that makes sense so if you have two ticks from a dot i think you still get alt but you get it at like a significantly like lesser rate than if it's three so it's like you will notice that you will get alt a lot faster from that as well as it will also apply off your bb aoe nades so i haven't actually tested because i haven't like done the, the super low con variants in a very long time if it's advantageous to go to 250 int for the extra, this extra 30% duration applies to the nades. So you could have like an extra 70% roughly uh, damage over time to your nades, which is just crazy and will yield tons of alt charge. There also are some people in the EU that have experimented with running like a 5 to 50 con uh, light BB with mortar, and then they run that with mortal and power. And the, the main idea is you just get your stacks because you're. A lower con and then you play kind of defensive and you use your mortar to nuke the clumps and because of that scaling from mortal and power it does a decent amount of damage so it's like it's basically like a pad fire staff damage oriented build uh but tends to just be better than fire staff because you have the extra life with second chance and uh, other like defensive perks which makes it so wonderbus can drop their con but still get tons of value so that's it for for light it, not a ton has changed there, except for people like lowering the con, and then people have been running that mostly because it's able to one-shot healers, because healers have been stacking heavy into thrust protection. And when you scale so much off of fire, which if you're running the... If you're going against healers and you want to play it to counter healers, there's probably an argument to run the the, the opal specifically, because it will be a 40% fire uh, scaling, and healers tend to just run straight thrust, which means that you will just go through that. A uh, BB naturally is a thrust damage weapon, which is noteworthy. So you don't want that much scaling on your BB itself. But if you have something like a flame attunement and then you have like a tier two fire, you will still probably do plenty of scaling. It will be a plenty of fire damage to be able to one shot healers. But I could, it would be interesting to see the tests of like a, doing damage versus a healer with the fire damage setup with a rune glass or not. But I have not tested that yet. Medium is still being played too, but it's being played less. It's If it is being played, it's typically played at the 150 con. The main reason why you would run medium over light at the moment is if you wanted to contest kill squad people, in particular decks, uh, because medium will actually be able to live and take the duel versus decks, versus light will not be able to. But light will be able to like one-shot decks. Uh, the other thing that kind of comes into factor between medium and light is a lot of companies now are playing for the forts fight itself and not for the outside of points. Because in most uh, competitive wars, the outside of points are kind of lost within the first 5 to 15 minutes. Average is about 10 to 13-ish, I'd say. You lose all outside points. So the majority of a fort fight you're doing in fort. And at the end of the day, whoever wins fort wins. And light BB tends to do very well there. Medium tends to do a little bit weaker there, but it's a little bit better outside of fort. The main advantage of medium is like again like that dueling aspect, and it's like a little bit better at holding space, but you have a lot less mobility. So if you're like wanted to position yourself, say uh, I could run over to this fort in a second, but there there's like spots where you can position yourself where you will just get more value, and medium's able to hold that space a little bit better than light, but it's not able to do as much burst damage to healers. I would not say it's a healer contest role. It's more of a anti-kill squad sort of peel-related role. Uh, and when you move on to to heavy... Well, actually, there's one other thing with medium. Some people have been, like, kind of changing the way medium's been running. They've been running it with 50 or 100 con. The, the reason why you would do that over 
doing it in light is because you're actually more tanky with 50 to 100 con and you can get more damage if you're in medium than if you're 150 in light which is like a weird concept but just because you're a heavy armor weight that tends to be better the other nice part about medium is the shirking fort is not getting nerfed and shirking fort on medium tends to proc very very easily as well as things like shirking and power tend to be pretty strong on medium but don't tend to be as strong on light because light is using your dodges more for positioning and mediums using them to actually dodge abilities so if you if you time your conditionals right medium can be more damage and more survivable than right it's just about being in the right place at the right time and there's a lot on the positioning aspect that is difficult heavy is being played still as a strictly as a a point build with not really any exceptions there have like been some like more niche arguments for heavy that have changed, but for the the most part, people are playing two hundred con, one hundred fifty strength, one hundred fifty int, and they're playing that with IG with a pylon with pylon burst and deadly frost. One change that was a ghost change that was not mentioned as of recent is deadly frost now gives alt charge. So if you drop a uh, deadly frost on dummies, see if I have a deadly frost IG, I do, then you will get ult charge off of that so that's significant when there's actually a lot of people like running through your gate but obviously versus like two things here it's not going to give me much ult but when there's a lot of people running through the gate it's very significant uh the other thing that's kind of cool is your when you break your block that will apply a dot to things and that will give you ult charge and then pylon burst will also give you ult charge uh i have a pylon burst thing i think it's this one yeah but I'll I'll put it back on when I'm out of combat. So in, in heavy, that's really, really common to run. The other reason why IG is just really popular is mostly just for this gate hold, which is what I talked about earlier, where people are playing for these gates. IG is by far the best weapon in, in gate holds. There have been like some developments in EU where they're trying to bypass it by going like double bruiser in certain groups with double pocket heal and then the bruisers just basically walk through for free and start swinging on people so people can't actually get off their ice showers consistently and that's been like a soft way to counter it but it hasn't been super consistent but the the main reason why people run pylon is for this so you can just see how fast my ult goes up and I, and if you time this right at the beginning of a, a fort, you should be getting ult in about 30 seconds if you're AFK and not doing anything else. But if you are like actively dodging and like have your ice got one out and then using your other abilities, uh, it could be a lot faster than that. So yeah, like that's a that's an ult that was pretty fast. Um, with heavy, there are some like other changes in terms of weapon perks. You want plague nades on your blunderbuss because you're not playing for damage; you're playing for that util sort of role. This also tends to be a really, really good role for shot callers to play, and it tends to be a really good role for gate repairs to play because you're inherently super tanky and it's super hard for you to die. And it's not super mechanically intensive; it's just like a lot of pre-war stuff in terms of what gear you're running. Uh, in terms of what alts I would play with these builds, with a uh, heavy. I think Vines is decent. I also think Purple Vile is pretty good. I mentioned this in a tier list video. I did, at the time, I mentioned Gold Bile. Uh, Gold Bile still bugs other people's heals. I thought they fixed that. They did not, and they're going to be fixing that in the PTR, but that will be delayed for like another month, so we won't really see it. But Purple Bile is still really good for the 30% disease that occurs when people walk through the chokes, which basically forces them to use a cleanse pot. Stone form is not enough just to live from that bile disease. And then you can hit them after with something else. Like if you have VGs, they could drop the scream. They could drop an oblivion to strip that cleanse and hit them with a the scream. Like it tends to be very strong. I would probably recommend Purple Bile over the Vines for the heavy build in general. In the medium and light builds, I think you have options. It, since you get to 150 int, detonate is kind of interesting. But I don't think it's like the main thing you look for. I think you probably end up looking for Vines. Detonate isn't bad, though. You'll have extra damage scaling off the 150 int perk. It's just uh, kind of awkward because you don't want to nuke yourself. But if you time it right, it could be really good. I could see the argument of it being really good in light, but I'd say just play around with the alts and you'll find something that works for that. But when in doubt, vines tends to be really good. I've also seen a lot of people in medium and light when they run lower con to just run stone form. And I think that's a fine argument as well. Uh, stone form will just help you live a lot longer and I think it's like a really safe default but 
if you want to like maximize value with the build, uh, then ideally you would not be running it in most situations. But I'm saying this like a kind of the. I, I'm not too sure about that. Like, I think if you're running light 50 con, I would definitely go stone form. But if you're running like medium with 200 con, which is like another variant that's like somewhat popular, but not as played anymore because it just turns to. It's like basically the heavy variant, but with a little bit more damage and a lot less survivability because heavy is a big difference in terms of survivability than medium. So, uh, I would not say it's generally favored. But yeah, I have like a little sheet that I'll go over for the rest of this. Just. To help kind of speed this along, but uh, Light talked about perks a little bit. You want to basically just boost that fire damage as much as possible. It's really good at finishing things, but kind of lower survivability, and I would classify it as like a backline healer uh, nuker role. So, nukers are generally slotted like in kill squads. I've also seen this Light just slotted in a normal group. It's like one spot that we really like to slot mediums is like on this like staircase area. Just because this is really a good, important spot to control in the fort, because it can protect people from getting up here, and it's like a really easy shower here, as well as people getting through this gate and coming around. So just having like a few people standing up here and helping with that really helps. But they're also subject to being hit by those the Dex players over here, so it's like a little bit, uh, it's it's situational, because people tend to swarm gates if you if you get shot by Dex when you're here, it's like really awkward. But that's a spot where medium's really good. The spots where like light is really good is like say someone has to like triple roll through and then they get over to here, then you could just basically one shot them with light. I have a video from a war I had yesterday, uh, or had a moment yesterday with a a guy named Nice Guy Healer in my group who there's an IGVG who came through this gate and then triple rolled past me. I hit them with a shower and Nice Guy was over here and just one shot them in light, and there was no counterplay whatsoever. So. It's like a really, with these BB builds in general, you're waiting for people to use their stamina and you're using your abilities when they use their stamina and you're going to be able to one-shot them if you're playing one of the lighter builds. And if they don't use their stamina, they're going to be taking a lot of damage from you. So it's really solid in most situations to play the light or set, medium setup. And I think at that point, it's just a preference. Uh, but light tends to be slotted more than medium by the higher end companies, mostly because it's like a little bit extra damage, and you don't really need that extra survivability in Fort with medium uh, as much as you do outside, and people have been playing for the Fort more. But on, on attack, light can be a little bit more awkward. I didn't put 200 con uh, medium on this list, but that's another build that's been popular with 150 strength. It's just like a, a lot less damage than these other builds, so... It, at that point, if you're running that sort of setup, I think a medium greatsword warhammer would just inherently do better. But that's a build that's not being slotted as much in NA. So if you're in NA, I don't think 200 con with medium is a bad setup. I would just consider it to be more of a util build at this point than a DPS build. And then these are like your standard DPS variants. I also have seen, I mentioned the 50 to 100, 100 con IGBB. Uh, I put companies here, too, that have run this build. I've seen Dropouts run it, which I'm in. Supple runs it. Boogafu runs it. Uh, I've seen 5-Con Mortar and run in EU. I believe that was Parabellum, who got who lost to Bonsai in 10 minutes, so it's like kind of harder to judge from that, but I believe Parabellum's still the second-best company in EU. So it's possible that it's good, and I've also seen Plage run it in OPR, so that means that... Uh, other companies are at least considering it. I know that used to be meta on some of the West servers in New World, but it fell off uh, pretty hard just to random dex players, because the main weakness is this, is if you get hit by dex at all, you are just incredibly uh, fucked, <laughs> to put it lightly. Uh, but if you're able to control zone really well, this build could be pretty solid. It's just a matter of like how good your zone control is. And the, the other thing with EU is there are basically no dex players that seem to hit people from bots I've watched. And NA, it's like really, really common to just get like hit from random spots by dex players if you're just not playing like with your team or in the clump. So I'd say it's more of a, a build that is better versus less dex players. It's not as good in OPR, uh, but it tends to be somewhat viable in some wars. I have pulled it out in some points during Fort, because it's like really easy to hide somewhere here and just lob nades wherever the clump is on top of healers. But it's been a pretty rare build to pull out. It's kind of a last-ditch situation where I'd pull that one out. 
medium 50 to 100 con uh, IGBB, so this is just dumping more points into strength or int that I talked about. The advantage of that setup is you get more damage than you do in light, but you get also get more survivability, so it's like a, a good balance point between the, the nuker setups, and also people tend not to hit you because they are like, hey, this guy is in medium, uh, and they don't realize how little con that you have, and you're still inherently super tanky because of shirking fort, and that build will not be getting nerfed with uh, the decrease in shirking fort and Brazil, so I expect that build to be even better next patch, but for this patch it's still decent, it's just not as popular as the other builds. And then heavy con, 300 con VGBB is like a former top tier EU build, not played as much anymore, they've been playing spear in that slot instead, and then and I'm pretty sure I'm the only person that runs this still. Uh, but if you play it with bile, it tends to be pretty good. The this is like an anti clump build, which in EU it doesn't make sense to run it anymore because people have been playing split more. But in NA, people tend to clump very hard, so it can be a good build. The main bad part about this is you you have to run an ice gauntlet, which is not, or you have to drop an ice gauntlet, which is tends to be pretty bad. Like it's to the point now where people are trying to get gate-oriented healers to run ice gauntlets to prevent people from getting through gates. And when you're at that point and you're dropping an ice gauntlet for another build for arguably about the same utility as ice gauntlet, if not a little bit less, because if you run the ice gauntlet, you can get bile up super fast and you can start using that, then it doesn't make a ton of sense. I think the, the main strength of the build is weirdly with the net shot. Uh, if you're able to get apparatus off, and if you have exhaustive net shot, which I don't have, it is like the most game shutting down thing to face like Dex players against. Like it's actually incredible. Like if you hit a great sword player with this, there's just no way that they are able to do anything, and they're just dead. And if you stack that on top of like refreshing ward, which you're able to really easily do in heavy, I can believe in my sets I run seven refreshing ward. Uh, then I'm able to just constantly lob those and not really have to worry because if people get on me and pressure me, then I'm going to be able to get like two or three more of those off before I die. So I'm able to use it offensively and just shut players down. So it's like a... But there's not as many builds that are able to get all the way down here because they're trying to get to double down on right tree. It would be interesting to see an argument to run something where you don't go to double down, but instead just get to last chance and then try to go more into left tree to see if you can get to apparatus, so something like this. I think this would be kind of interesting and light if you were to run exhaustive net shot, but it's not meta. A double down is a very solid perk. The only problem with going double down is you have to get two basically useless perks. Uh, this buckshot perk is really good for light. It's not very good for heavy, and it's not super good for medium, but you have to take it. Uh, I could also see the argument of dropping this maybe for Buckshot, and then you can run this setup in light pretty well. But yeah, in terms of trees, this would be like a more exotic. Uh, the classic tree that you'll see for a lot of these kill squad builds is this. And then the, the heavy tree that is played is basically also this, but then you just run Fortified Aggression. It's not very complicated. Um, and then the, the other variant that is sometimes played but not super common, is if you're heavy and you're util enough where it doesn't make sense to even run the damage from Azoth Shrapnel Blast, you cut that, and then you go into this Blast Shot perk. Blast Shot Haste is significant. Uh, it, will, it will let your bruisers at times just run past people and get a really easy clump, but if there is CC on the ground, you will not be able to do much with it. But there's always times in Fort where it seems like there's like a, like a half a second with no CC, and during those times you just zoom past people. And then you're able to use that haste like super effectively. I think the Blast Shot friend is not as impactful, uh, but the, and the knockdown can be good. But it's like conditional, because if they have grit, then it will not work. But the main advantage this lets you do is you're able to get a lot of these perks that you're or not able to get normally, and then you're able to go into this left tree more and just kind of get whatever perks make sense. And this is what I normally run because I don't uh, really use the reload with BB out. I swap to my secondary to reload, and this just gives me a more ult charge. So this is like a pure tank setup, but then you have like basically no burst damage. But the advantage of this is this is like better util as well as blast shot can lead to knockdown kills. And the 
the actual knockdown for blast shot doesn't launch people super far away. Unlike clear out, it's just more of like a stationary knockdown. So it's it's not as detrimental as people think, but it is very possible still to save people when you hit them with blast shot. So you need to be careful with that setup. That being said, heavy IGBB is becoming less and less popular, but it's still played. The main reason for that is people were slotting more and more greatsword warhammers and deadly groups, and this is not as good of a, a group build in other groups typically. You can write it on a side point, but then you're giving up damage when they get in the fort and and access for and for more util. Which there's an argument for either way, but people tend to fam, fam, favor damage in the fort uh, because you want to kill people as quickly as possible when they get through and not really play for that long game on defense. But on something like attack, I definitely could see that being more popular. And then on attack, some things that people have been doing is they've put more bruiser groups on B because people typically have been stacking B with IGBBs and other super heavy groups that don't have a lot of pressure. And then when that happens, you're able to slide some of those other heavy groups off to side groups and are able to walk through here uh, more freely than on B. And your bruiser groups are able to win B freely because they're favored versus the, the BBs there. So it's like a, a weird balance where you can make your side points a little bit more tanky and then your B gate can inherently get more value. Also, this B choke is inherently wider, which lets bruisers play the game a little bit better. But And then the other niche spot where this heavy build is really, really strong is it's really good for a gate repairer on defense because it's super hard to die and it's really good for a shot color on defense because, again, it's super hard to die and it doesn't require a ton of mechanical skill to do well. It's just a lot of, like, it's just positional knowledge at that point. And so it's like really good build to not really have to focus on the game, which is not taken away from like the skill in the build. Like you could still see like a skilled IGBB versus not a skilled IGBB, but there's like, uh, it just lets you focus on other things. So if you're doing something like repairs or shot calling or calling respawns, this tends to be a good build to, to put people on in that situation. And is better than other builds like Bruiser where you have to talk to people a lot or IGVG where you have to talk to people a lot and you have to focus on multiple things at once. So those are the, the main things I have to say about IGBB. Uh, I could put these notes in the description, but I, I think I've talked about everything here except for gems. Um, most of these, people are not running like a 10-10 split as much anymore. It depends on your role. Like, if I'm playing point, four Rezil is fine because there's nothing with above a 1.4 crit mod, and that's, like, conditional. That will hit me. So I'm, like, giving up 10% extra crit damage if great swords are, or great axes are flanking me, which is pretty rare, to be honest, on point, if you are positioned, like, near the edge, which is where most people play. And it's also just, like, an extra 10% damage that you give up in exchange for another freedom that will help you live from most combos in the game, so... That's like a spot where four Rezil is okay. These other builds, I would definitely run five because they're going to be versus decks a lot, especially with next patch for the light. Five is mandatory. Medium, it's debatable, but I think it's still basically mandatory because it's a duel. That's a role that focuses on dueling a lot. Uh, and then in terms of split, I don't think Opal is, is as popular right now. I think people have been starting to go Ruby again because Blunderbusses are dropping their con, so you need to kind of ward versus it more. And generally, opal damage is insignificant except for fire damage. Like, if you think of fire damage, you think of blunderbuss, you think of fire staff. Like, void gauntlet has damage, but it's not significant. Ice gauntlet damage is nowhere significant as it used to be because ultimate chill is gutted. Even though it's super prevalent, it doesn't matter that much if you get hit by ice gauntlet damage. And it tends to be more, like, tickle damage than, like, really beefy, like, kind of scary sort of damage. So in these, what I would say is just run heavy slash resistance. If you're in light, I would do thrust resistance. If you're in medium, I would do either thrust or slash. It's debatable depending if you're fighting greatsword people more or if you're fighting bows more. And then in heavy, I would just do slash, but then run some uh, fire damage ward in there as well. And then just fill the rest with general slash and general opals so like what i would run probably for like when the heavy setup would be like 25 percent slash uh, maybe five percent general fizz and then like 12 to 18 percent fire and not really worry about the, the opal damage as much and some people have been swapping to like soft counter that setup but it's not as common and bbs tend to be so much more common than bows that it's still worth it at the end of the day for most players to run a setup like that 
So, yeah, that's all I have in terms of an IGBB guide. Let me know if I missed anything. If you have any questions, I'll answer that in the comments below. I tried to make this as detailed as possible and cover everything. Ults is still like a preference thing. I'd probably lean towards stone form, and if you're in heavy, I'd go to vines or purple bile. Again, purple because it's not bugged right now. Later on, uh, gold bile, I think you could argue for the healing one, which most people will not like, or the exhaust one, which is very strong. But the problem with that is it reduces your team's healing right now, so it's like kind of a interesting situation where it's like you don't want to throw that into your friendly sacred grounds, but if you say like threw that in a choke past where your sacred grounds were, it would be good value and it not would not hamper your healing effects. So if you play it well, then I think gold bile can be good. It's just if you're not playing it well and you're throwing it like on a 50v50 and not like in their back line moreover, then it's going to inherently be throwing. But if you want to throw it like in a 50v50, then run purple bile. And that's what I have for this video. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll put a pull up for the video tomorrow and see you guys in the next one.